okay, YouTube seems to be working there now. I'll just pop out YouTube chat, make sure it's working fine. Again, tonight, as always, if the sound is working, please let me know straight away because it's a bit hard for me to monitor the sound to make sure it's working. Let me go over to YouTube chat. In there. Uh, okay. So for those of you who've just tuned in, I'm Pastor Tom Hoban of Good News Christian Church, and we are here on our midweek Bible school or Bible study, and we endeavor to make disciples of Jesus Christ who love God and love people. And I can see, I think it's Moni, I can see you just have to come in the chat there. I want to go to Facebook. And on Wednesday nights during this whole lockdown season, we are doing our best to love and serve people by having our classes online, our study online. I think there's one or two people in <coughs> in, face <coughs> in Facebook. So if you do come in, please say hi. Again, Moni, you're, I think Moni, you're the only person I can see in there at the moment. Uh, uh, so Moni, will you let me know if the sound is going okay? Is the sound good? Is the sound not good? I'm not quite sure who will be here tonight. You said hi to everyone. Hi Moni. Is the sound good? That's one of the things I need to know Moni. So if you wouldn't let me know if the, uh, let me know whether the sound is good or the picture is good. If you, if you can hear Again, anyone who's coming into Facebook or anybody who's coming into YouTube, make sure and say hi to one another. Even if you're just popping in, just to have a look, let us know that you're actually in and having a look. Uh, let me go over to YouTube and say hi. Or Facebook, I should say. Hi. Everyone. Hi, everyone. And is the sound working? Is the sound working? So let me go back over to the <coughs> YouTube chat. Maybe I'm just talking to myself tonight. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me tonight. Who knows? Maybe I should go away and come back again. What do you think? Could be just me tonight. As we know, we're coming up to Easter week, so... A lot of people are again not quite sure what we're doing. Last week we actually spent some time looking at St. Patrick uh, in the area of prayer. And so if you didn't, you know, obviously you mightn't have been there live. So if you are tuned into that and the whole area of St. Patrick and prayer and how his prayer life really was the development of him being such a solid Christian and relationship with God. And then he ended up being an, up, an apostle to Ireland, establishing and planting churches. And his prayer life is a great foundation for that. And he was Pentecostal in his prayer life. What I mean by that is he was spirit filled in his prayer life, uh, led by the Holy Spirit, he even started praying in the spirit during his sleep and praying in tongues. So I don't know tonight. I don't know. Something seems to be going on. I don't know if uh, everybody is tuned in or if there's something going wrong here that I don't know about. I hope everything's working. If it's not working, please let me know. Please let me know. Let me go over to Facebook here and see if there's someone on Facebook. Do, do, do. In Facebook, I see there's two people in there, but I don't know who is in there. Oh, hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. It's good to see you, Elizabeth. How are you and Johnny keeping up? You're keeping well. Hi, Ross. All the way from Dublin. It's good to see you. <coughs> good to see you, Ross. I hope you're keeping well, Ross. I hope you're doing well up in Dublin. Uh, I did try to contact there. Was there any news on any news on the building side of things, I wonder, for the Foursquare Church in Dublin? I did try to contact Vic and uh, Apple recently. Let's give them a call again. I'm good news on that. Just specifically when we might be ending up Actually, out of the lockdown. Let me go over to YouTube again to see if there's 
Anybody have to come in? No, we're very quiet on YouTube today. Very quiet on YouTube. So, okay, with that in mind, I'm just going to go ahead anyway. Because I don't know what that is. Sometimes that can happen. And I just want to make sure. Oh, hi, Mercy. I see Mercy's after coming in there. Uh, is the sound working okay, Mercy? Would you let me know if the sound is working okay? I'm not quite sure, so I just say sound is good. Again, also same with yourselves on um, on Facebook. How are you feeling? I'm feeling well, um, Elizabeth. I'm actually doing well. I had a bit of a battle there last Sunday, was it? But by the end of the sermon, by the end of Sunday sermon, <coughs> I was actually doing well. I was actually doing well, so that's good. Uh, by God's grace, as you know, I'm fighting a battle here health-wise. And by God's grace, I will win in every way. I have won in Christ already, but in every way, manifest that winning uh, for the glory of God. Uh, who is in there? The sound is okay. Thank you, Moni. Thank you, uh, Mercy. Sound is good. Great stuff. So let's kick in. I'm just going to kick in straight away. Uh, what we're going to look at tonight. We're going to look at an area, let me get the slides up. The slides mightn't be working because, ah, they're the slides from Sunday. Uh, let me, we're going to look at an area that is just an introduction. As you know, we're coming up to Easter week. And as Easter week comes up to, we're a little bit, you know, things are happening differently. So we have this week and next week. And I really just want to uh, introduce you to an area uh, of the whole area of Bible study and what we're doing in the church and everything. Next week, I'm hoping, I don't know, we haven't pulled it off yet. I'm hoping next week I'll actually be interviewing someone who is, if it works out well, I'll be interviewing someone who is a top theologian within the Foursquare movement. His name is Mar Gary Mastorf. And uh, I'm hoping that I might be able to pull that off. Now, he lives in America, so it's, uh, well, I'm hoping to try and pull that off. If I can pull that off, it would be great. I uh, will be interviewing him to some of the subject of what we're looking at tonight. Now let me just go back there. Sorry guys, I'm just getting the slides here for tonight. And if anybody comes in there, make sure I get them to say thank you. Okay, we got them up there now. Good stuff. So what I want to look at tonight is a little bit about what we're about as charisma. I also want to spend some time, uh, now that we have, I want to say, hi Helen, it's good to you. Um, I want to spend some time also in the area of answering any questions that people may have as well. Uh, as you know, we've actually been studying in, for those who are part of the book of Revelation, got back to me. Um, at this whole area of charisma. The whole area of charisma is an area where is to reproduce. And reproduce on Jesus as just come to save us. He came to also participate in our own um, salvation as in becoming mature like him. So it's saved as not heaven <clears throat> but it's also about becoming Christ. And he also wants us to his mission, to take on his mission, be effective, and to reach up to others, disciples of Jesus, and continue on. But to do that, it, takes, it takes a whole process, changing our mindsets, lots of different things going on, and that's one of my strong desires, as always being, is to really make strong, solid Christians, who in turn will make us, you know, and it's always been my desire. And so, charisma is part of the overall picture of what we're trying to do. And I want to remind you of that, and then hopefully, we're talking to us next week if, if I can get him, or if I can pre record, I'm trying to work out something together, and to see if I can have him talk about the disciples and training in four square. Up solid so that they're effective as a disciple of Jesus, just solid mature people. 
have a common the statement of to actually do more in the sense of frontline ministry. But everybody's called to be solid and everybody's called to be a minister. Every single believer is called every single believer is called to become Christ like and that also Please let me know. Hi Ross. Same here. We're cutting out and, and the video's frozen. We can't hear you really well. Okay, just bored. Okay, let me see. Has it come back? Has the sound come back? Are you actually hearing me now? Please let me know if there's a problem still. There's a little bit of a time delay, so uh, hi, just bored. I don't know if we've ever met before. I don't, I didn't see you on before, but you're very welcome. You're very welcome. We have, uh, we're here in our Bible study. Extremely crackly. Uh, okay. Sound is okay now. It's back. Okay, uh, Helen, is it still extremely crackly? Hello. Hi Nathaniel. <laughs> Nathaniel. <laughs> Just bored. Uh, as in Mercy, as in Nathaniel. Is that Nathaniel as in uh, Nathaniel Gomez? Or is that a different Nathaniel? Much better now. Okay, the sound is working fine. Okay. Guys, I don't know where I stopped, where I was talking to myself. Hopefully on Facebook it's all fine now as well on Facebook. Um, Oh, it's okay on Facebook. Sound good now, Ross says. Okay, great stuff. Thanks, guys. So I was talking to myself there, probably. I'm not quite sure. But uh, Nathaniel, I don't know if that's Nathan, as in Nathan Go Gomez, but uh, Nathaniel. But it's good to see you, uh, Nathaniel. Good to see you. Be blessed, man. Well, again, going back to where we're at. Uh, where was I? I'm not quite sure where I got cut off. But here anyway, on Wednesday nights, we try and facilitate this aspect of helping everybody to grow. We want to see, it's a passion of mine, we want to see people grow in their faith and to become all that they can be. And that's partly uh, <clears throat> partly what we're, every church should be about and every Christian should be about. And so charisma is part of that. We want to try and help everybody to become theologically sound. Because you're called to become theologically sound, to think about God in a sound way, and then out of that place to live in a sound way as well, to behave in a sound way, and then to bring that to other people, to have a theological soundness. So next week, again, I don't know where I got caught off, so please forgive me if I'm repeating myself. Next week, I'm hoping that we'll have one of our top theologians, uh, Foursquare Church theologians, in and talking about DLT, Discipleship Leadership Training. Uh, hoping to talk about that because it, it dovetails with our charisma here in Ireland and what we've been trying to do. And so I want to just give you a little overview before we go into it. What is charisma? When we talk about charisma, we're talking about what Jesus did. He called us to be disciples. He made disciples and he called us to be disciples. It says in Matthew 28 verses 18 to 20, it says, And all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. In, in a full sense, you can protect your spirituality, your your actions, so people to be that. And then we all also part of discipleship is helping then people to love others in genuine lifestyles that are kingdom lifestyles, heaven on earth, beginning to more live like that in the name. So the grace of Jesus bringing us into this salvation, bringing us into this discipleship pathway, living in the family of God, and out of that growing up and maturing. And we looked at that for the past few weeks when we just covered the whole area of commitment. Also part of that is then reaching out and making other disciples. So having that whole process of really changing people's minds as well. We have a different aspect of, of all of that and different levels. So as a church, but also in Foursquare in Ireland and also 
wherever we can throughout the world. We want to just bless using the different means we can to do that. And so as we go forward, we have a vision of seeing people. We have a vision of seeing people in our area, in our Lord, in our kingdoms, solid disciples who have solid theology. All of these aspects are such weakness in the mind and in the hearts of believers. And when the time of squeezing comes upon them, uh, turmoil, you know, they, they haven't got really something solid to stand on. They're weak. When the pressures of the world come on, like in COVID, all of this kind of stuff, all kind of weird stuff comes out of them because they're under pressure. You know, there's just not that strength of character. And then also even when other waves of teachings comes along, that even if they recognize there's something wrong with the teaching at some level, they don't know how to deal with it. They just shout at it rather than being able to actually use the sword of the word of God and bring about difference. And we want to change that. We want to make sure that people become solid theologically and biblically who have practice spiritual practices, who live out the Christian life well. And we want to do that as best as we can. And then out of that, loving others and, and, and uh, multiplying disciples. I just realized that these are, the, these are the old slides. I just realized these are the actual, not the newer version that I just did. These are, these are the slides from about two years ago. Anyway, it's still the same stuff. There's a few changes in the new slides, but it'll, it'll be okay. Um, <clears throat> so our purpose is to go forward then and to create the atmosphere and to make disciples who are theologically sound. Our purpose is to go out and help them by proclaiming the gospel and then also help them to proclaim it and to incarnate that word in a living way. That's our purpose in uh, Kerygma. And the word Kerygma is all about proclaiming. But, you know, we have certain values. We value certain things as we want to train people up. And it's part of the DLT. It's part of the, if you want to become a leader in Foursquare, if you want to become a leader, it's part of the DLT, the process that we're developing for leadership and for becoming all that you can be as a leader and to be licensed as such so that we know that you're solid in your in your thinking and your theology. It's more than just having Bible verses off though. It's about a lifestyle as well, that your thinking is informed and your heart is changed so that by which you're genuinely changing. So we really value that a person has Jesus Christ as King and Savior in their heart, of course. And I got saved back 10 years ago or, you know, something happened 10 years ago where you had an encounter with Jesus, but you're, you have a genuine continuous walk with Jesus as your Savior and as your King. We really value that the Holy Spirit works as the true teacher, that even though we might teach and even though we might bring up Bible passages and Holy Spirit is the only one who can truly bring the revelation. There's many theologians out there. There's many Bible people out there. There's many people who grew up in church um, all their life who don't believe. They might have knowledge and they might be even able to expound the teachings of the church, <clears throat> the Christian faith, pretty well, but they just don't believe them. They're not actually come to a place where they have experienced God and experience the truth that the Holy Spirit brings into the heart. So it's it's not just an intellectual thing, it's also a thing of the heart as well. And so the Holy Spirit is ultimately the one who's your teacher, and he's the ulti ultimately the one who can really help you to see it as it truly is. Not just see it as an intellectual e an exercise, but really see it. And that you have a new paradigm, a new vision of things, that your mind is renewed, that you've repented. The Holy Spirit is the one who leads us into all truth and leads us into that place of repentance. So we value the Holy Spirit as our teacher. We value also that in our teaching, even when we're teaching on things that are, are obscure, whether it's the book of Job, whether it's the book of Genesis, whether it's Leviticus, whatever book of the Bible we're doing in Dig Deep, or whatever in the, our area of basic theology, systematic theology, whether we're studying about ecclesiology, the church, whether we're studying about... Um, end times, eschatology, whatever we're studying, that we 
keep it Christ centered, that Jesus is the center of it, that he's the Messiah, he's the centerpiece. Everything goes around that, he's the cornerstone. And so we value being Christ centered as we teach. Even if we look like as if we're teaching on a subject matter that is not necessarily directly connected to Christ, we see that all of the Bible and all of the Christian teaching, all of the Christian theology is connected to Jesus Christ, who is our Savior and our King. He is the Lamb who sits upon the throne, upon whom we all bow down and lay our crowns and worship upon Him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So it's Christ-centered. We value being Christ-centered in all our thinking and teaching. Look at that straight off, such as teaching on the book of Job, for instance, or Proverbs, for that matter, or any of the areas of teaching. We also value absolutely the canon of uh, the, the scripture canon, the scriptures, the biblical scriptures that we have in the Christian faith, that this is the word of God. And it's by this that we have authority to teach or by it's this that we, we lay down our lives before. That is, what does the Bible say? What does God say through his word? What has Jesus said through his word? This is where we, we submit to. All other things are good, but we value the word of God. We're evangelical in that sense. Evangelical is often depicted as those who, the word evangelical just means messenger or spreading the, the good news, but uh, often it's depicted of those who base their faith and practice upon the Bible. And that's what we are. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel, even with intellectual arguments. We are simply saying, what does the Bible say? That is the Christian faith. That is the Christian faith first and foremost. What does the scripture say? Now, if we need help with history, church history, if we need help with other outside thinking and, and wording, great, that's fine. But always in line with and always subjected to the authority of scripture. So we're Christ-centered, we're Holy Spirit thought. You know, here we are, and the Bible is the Word of God. So as we go forward with that, and also we take a hold of the fact that every single person has a personal responsibility in their choices they make to grow. And we respect that. We can't even force somebody to grow. If they don't want to grow, they don't want to grow. And so we respect that and we, we treasure that, that God gave people free will, and also the free will to choose to grow. You can grow in Christ. You can follow Christ or you can not follow Christ and not grow. And so you have a choice to play in that. So we, we challenge people to make that choice. We value it and we challenge people to make that choice. God wants people who seek him, not who are passive, but who are actively seeking him. And so we value the choice that people give to, to mature, to be teachable, to be teachable before God. And so we value that. If somebody's not teachable, we or somebody's rejecting in an, in a not that they have might have a difficulty and they're trying to understand but if somebody's genuinely trying to struggle with something that's a different thing but if somebody is obstinate and just not wanting to really learn they're not teachable in that sense <clears throat> they're not humble in that sense well then you can help them so you shake the dust off your feet as such and you say god bless you off you go and so likewise we're not out chasing people in that sense uh, either chasing people to come to Christ or chasing people to grow in Christ. Either way, we're not chasing people. We're leading, we're trying to lead them to green pastures and still waters where they come to Jesus as Savior and King or lead them to green pastures and still waters where they grow as a disciple of Jesus. But it's up to them to feed and choose. So we, we really respect that people have free choice. And that also includes, for those of you who are in leadership, remember that these values can go in all of those aspects in church, in church ministry, in church life. We also take a hold of that God has uh, given us freely the gospel. Jesus is freely given to us. And so where possible, we want to make sure there's no barriers to somebody wanting to grow. So everything we do within Kerygma we try and do it with no cost or low cost, meaning no cost is we literally trying to give away everything free, the teaching, everything free. Of course, we do challenge people that as you freely receive that you should listen to the Holy Spirit and try and support that which is a work of God and try and support that in the local church, try and support that here on YouTube or wherever we're doing it. And so we do want to encourage that, but at the same time that there's no barrier we freely give and without necessarily a, 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 an expectation or 
pressure or in any way to receive back. So we don't put a price. We don't put a price tag on our courses, on our teaching. We don't do that. We just challenge people to be disciples of Jesus. And in recognizing that, just as a side note, as recognizing that, we believe that God will touch people's hearts to give, to help support, and even some people who are not receiving anything from the course, people who are just Christians who, who sense what we're doing is good and helpful, even though they might be so much involved in their own thing, whatever their own thing is, you know, God has assigned them to do, that they also will maybe support what we're doing in different ways. But we do believe that God will be our source. And so we want to make sure that we freely give and to help people where they're at. No financial barrier. So, you know, I don't know if you know, but today, particularly in America and some other countries as well, that if you're to get solid teaching and solid theological te teaching, it can cost a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money. Some of the top theological schools, you know, like anything from sixteen to 30000 a year. You know, some of the top ones, some of the other ones may be a bit lower in price, but either way, it can be a lot, a lot of money. I honestly believe, and I honestly believe that that is a shame because the church should really be a place where people are. There's sometimes in some colleges they have scholarships and whatever, but really, the church should be a place that no matter who's there, that they should be able to go from A to Z in their growth, growth, not and it has nothing to do with how much money they have. I honestly believe that and I think it's a, a bit of a shame sometimes that even the Christian um, education system uh, to some degree has fallen into a worldly system. Uh, one of the reasons why Ireland was called the land of saints and scholars, just as a side note, one of the reasons why Ireland was called the land of saints and scholars is because when the Celtic church was after forming and established and they established monastic um, Areas Now, these monastic areas, they didn't necessarily always live in isolation. Sometimes they did, but often they lived in community as well, not just with one another, but close to the local community. But one of the major things about these monastic uh, settlements and, and um, Christian communities is they were very educated. They educated themselves not only in the Bible, but also in the education of the world as well. The Celtic Ch Christian Church was a very educated people. And then what they did also is they offered the education also free. Not many people know this. They offered the education free. So people from all over Europe, particularly during the Dark Ages, when, our, when the when Roman Emperor was falling apart and the barbarians were taking over Europe, that often a lot of people uh, who hungered for God and hungered for because hungered for understanding about life, they came to Ireland and got and got taught or got educated for free and then out of that the belief was as well if they really encounter God if they really have a solid theological understanding and are educated well whether they stay or go back to their own country it will spread the kingdom of God in a healthy way and that's exactly what happened and that's why Ireland became known as the land of saints who are people who are genuinely walking with God and scholars People who are sound and well balanced in their theological understanding and in their general education, and they've done it for free. Well, I think that is exactly the way we should be as well. I think that's the way the apostles were, I think that's the way the early church was, and I think that's the way we should be today. And I think some of the systems are in place now are actually not good. Now, sometimes you do need to somehow set away funding and, and stuff like that for those who need to study on a more deeper intellectual level, who need to, you know, study the, the Hebrew and Greek languages, who need to study in a way, and you do need that as well. You do need that higher education, and sometimes to fund that is not easy. But generally speaking, I think we have done a disservice in the Christian church today, by which you nearly have the average day Christian and the high theologian, and they never, they're not meeting together when they really were all called to be solid disciples of Jesus. And by God's grace, we will change that. And I think persecution will actually change that as well. Amen. Do you know there's people in China who are pastoring churches of thousands upon thousands who have no degrees, but what they have is a solid walk with God and a solid intellectual understanding of the things of God. Amen and amen. Anyway, I just rabbited on there. So, by God's grace, everything should be, where possible, freely given or low cost in any form, shape or manner, but freely given.
expressing their God will turn on the and people will turn and support such a work. Some will support it abundantly because of the lack of others, and some will just receive freely and by God's grace maybe grow in Christ. Amen. Uh, so that's one of the values we hold in Kerygma. Another value that we hold in Kerygma is this, is that the spiritual strategy of warfare is also, the spiritual strategies of warfare is also in the renewing of the mind, that we transform people as they see God differently, as they see themselves differently, as they see the world differently in their paradigm and in their, in their thinking. And in that way, we're actually having spiritual warfare. And that's a strategy of God. You know, <clears throat> Jesus preached again and again. He was preaching using words, using the seeds of the word to bring about the harvest of the kingdom, but also using the word as swords, uh, you know, the sword of the word of God and then dealing with and, and defeating evil and bringing forward his kingdom. So we truly believe in the strategy of Jesus. Paul and the apostles went about doing the same thing. Through preaching and teaching, people become born again as they believe the truth. Not only born again, as through preaching and teaching, their minds are renewed to think differently, to see differently. And out of that, the kingdom of God begins to establish in their heart, in their lives, in their actions, and the kingdom of God spreads. But it starts through the preaching and teaching and through the changing of minds. We believe in that strategy. That's a strategy that is from the Bible. That is spiritual warfare in its essence, is one heart at a time, one mind at a time, or multiple, you know, in, in some settings, where their thinking is changed, where they repent and they change, the metanoia, changing in their thinking, and brings about the kingdom of God in their lives and the lives of those around them. So we believe in that strategy, and, and hence why we want to have solid theological understanding and biblical understanding. Now, <clears throat> uh, an area that is not in this, but it would, it, in the new slides it would be, number eight would be different. Number eight is this, is we believe or we value very um, intellectual, strong, clear, intellectual, solid thinking. And that that is a way forward, that God wants us to love him with our mind, to have clear and solid thinking about these things so that we can then also communicate the truths in a clear and solid way. We value clarity of mind. We value clarity of intellectual thinking. And when I say intellectual thinking, I'm not talking about something highfalutin. I'm talking about just simple. Jesus spoke clearly and intellectually solid. And so we're called to have the same kind of mindset. Uh, number eight, or well, it would have been number nine now. We value uh, mentorship and relationship as a role in discipleship. You know, that, that we're connected. We're not... We're not just have a relationship with God, but we're connected to one another and we need each other's help. And so we value relationship and mentorship in its truest form of discipleship. Discipleship is not just a class. Discipleship is one life affecting another life. It's more than just a class. And, and so we value in that sense community in a church setting. We value that in a sense of life groups, but we value that in a sense of also trying to create this atmosphere of discipling one another, helping one another, whether in a uh, uh, whether it's in a fitting where we're discussing things together or whether it's in a sense of I have a little bit more and I'm sharing with you to help you to come forward. So we value that. And then also lastly we value, which would be number 10, it's number 9 on the slide there, but we value in essentials unity, in non-essentials liberty and in all things love. So in essentials unity, you know that there is some essentials and that we are called to have a a solid and clear and clarity thinking on those essential things, no matter what Christian we are, no matter what church we're going to. But we also know that there's non-essentials and there's a certain liberty in non-essentials. And we, we can value that and we can value the variety of that. And it's it's not only okay, it's actually to be somewhat celebrated that to some degree, different strokes for different folks in, in some areas and in some cultures and in some aspects and to value that and to see that. And that's okay. And to know the difference, to be able to discern the difference. But no matter what, particularly in discussion, in discussion with people who are non-Christian, in discussion with people who are Christians, but might have a different viewpoint in all things. Of course, in the essentials, we want unity. Jesus is Lord, first of all. Jesus has rose from the dead, such a thing. Jesus died for our sins. In essentials, unity, but in non-essential liberty, but at all times to express the essential kingdom value of love 
to express at all times whether we're discussing essentials or non-essentials or whatever we're discussing, either within the church or without the church, even to non-believers, even to atheists, even to rebellious people, but particularly those who are part of the church family, both our local church family in our discussion groups here or discussion group with anybody else, is that at all times the kingdom value of love and respect at all times so we value these things as we go forward in charisma learning and becoming disciples of Jesus so call to make disciples to call to make disciples who do strategies to make disciples who think the mind of Christ who, who grow and, and have that th- uh, a good solid understanding a healthy sound disciple and then those disciples gather together make a healthy an effective and sound church. You will never have a healthy and effective sound church just because one or two people are. We need a whole body of effective and sound disciples. That makes an effective and sound church. And in that sense, then a sound and effective church has the in the gathered together has the great effect of affecting a city and affecting a nation and even onto the globe that we're called, that is the strategy make disciples that makes healthy church that makes a healthy church movement within a nation or a region which helps to create a whole kingdom atmosphere in an area this is a, it's not a rocket science it really isn't it's when i say rocket it's not difficult it really is a strategy within the bible and we just need to stay with god's strategy stay at it stay at it persevere in God's strategy and know that these things actually make an effect and that you and I are part of that. So charisma is about everyone becoming a disciple of Jesus. Every single person recognizing the disciple. It's about making discipleship. So our charisma, what we're about is really trying to create that atmosphere of making disciples. Now the word charisma in its original form means proclamation. It comes from the area of crying out or proclamation or you know the the news reader using the reading out the news not so much on tv but the street corner you know hear ye hear ye hear ye type thing and proclaiming out the truth or the good news of what has to be said or the news so it's a proclamation it's it's the declaring out what the king has said or the latest good news and so that's where charisma comes from but it was used again and again in the new testament and so when we talk about charisma We particularly see it in the life of Jesus, where Jesus, when he came out of his time of preparation and time of prayer and fasting, as he launched his ministry, he went into a local synagogue. And when he was in the local synagogue, he took up the scroll of Isaiah and he found a passage of scripture within the the book of Isaiah, the rule of Isaiah. And this is the passage that you're probably well familiar with. It says, the spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim. Now that word proclaim there is charisma. The spirit of the Lord is upon, is upon me and he's anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind and to set free the oppressed. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. I want you to notice this here three times the word proclaim is there. The power of proclaiming. Now Jesus proclaimed it in not only words, but he also proclaimed in how he reacted with people, how he interacted with people with love and compassion. And he also proclaimed by also demonstrating the kingdom of God in power. So we see in Jesus' life words and lifestyle action and in power. And so likewise, when we're talking about charisma, we are in one sense taking a hold of that, that we're called to really think the thoughts of God, to speak the words of God, to live the life of God, and to demonstrate the kingdom of God. We're called to think the thoughts of God, speak the words of God, to live the life of God, and to demonstrate the kingdom or the power of God. And that's what charisma is about on those levels, all of those levels, as a disciple of Jesus Christ. And we want to create that atmosphere we want to help one another to be that to be a proclamation that in one sense that our lifestyle 
incarnate, the incarnate Christ, the, the Word made flesh, that Jesus showed us God, that we too are incarnate, incarnation of Jesus. We, we too are proclaiming Jesus by our lifestyle because of our thinking is different we change our thinking and Jesus is able to flow through us and then also that we speak it out we speak it out with the seeds and the truth and the sword of the word of God and then also even minister it in different ways whether we're called to minister in in very public ways or very private ways that we're also called to be that so we're called to be a charisma as such we're all called to proclaim and this is a passion of mine is that not only I would be better at being a proclaimer in my thoughts, in my in my actions, in my words, and in ministry, but that others would also that I would help others to really be that, and that's one of my heart passions is to be that. To be that. So that's why we're called charisma. You know, it says in scripture, it says in Romans chapter ten, verse fourteen, it says, "How then can they call on the one whom they have not believed in, and how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard, and how can they?" here without someone preaching to them you know god wants to bring about his kingdom in your life and in the lives of those around you and so he wants you to be that incarnate word he wants to bring it to others and i can only do so much you can only do so much but together we can really really bring out more we can bring out more of god's kingdom in our lives and and so we want to recognize that calling upon our lives to fulfill that as his disciples to be spreaders of the good news in our thoughts, in our lifestyle, in our words, and in ministry power, whether that's in practical ministry power or supernatural ministry power. So with that in mind, we're called to, to lead others. We're, let's lead and disciple. Well, we're called to all disciple others. We're called to lead as well. You're called to leadership. You're called to be an influencer. You're called to be the head and not the tail. You're called to bring a difference around you. In your workplace everywhere you're called to be a different to bring about a difference so and if the blind lead the blind both will fall into the pit so for us to lead well and to disciple well we first have to make sure that our blindness or wrong thinking or how we see things is gone we have to renew our minds and that takes effort now i'm i'm saddened to see that there's many christians who just don't want to take the effort they don't want to put into time and effort. Now, again, I don't know if I cut off when I was kind of talking at the very beginning there, but you know, this whole lockdown time, many people, you know, said, Oh, you know, we want to get to church and we can't get to church. So then they all came online and started watching online. And, and so let's say there's a hundred people watching online. And all, as time went by, you see the numbers going down. You see the numbers going down. And, you know, they kind of come down to get to a, a plateau area. And so there's a number of people who just don't have that perseverance, they don't have that commitment. And then you might hear people saying, oh, you know, if church met together, you know, and it's our right, like that. And, and then when you do provide, <clears throat> when you do provide, whether it's church in car park or worship on the beach, or you do provide something, the very ones who are probably sometimes screaming the most, sometimes they don't even turn up. So, you know, there's a lot of people who have flesh motivation rather than perseverance and faith and love motivation and and they they don't really have the the goal and it's sad that many christians today it's sad today that there's many believers even though we have bibles at our ears we have the opportunity like crazy with technology with books everything there's many christians today who won't take the time to take the plank out of their eye they won't take the time to cleanse their thinking to do the work of thinking hard to love god with your heart and with your mind not just with doing stuff with your strength but with your heart and with your mind to to absolutely cleanse the motives of your heart to to do the work of motives and that's not easy it's hard work it's it's difficult work to cleanse your mind to think the mind of christ to have the mind of christ so that you can see clearly in your thinking and in your heart so that then when you do love god with your strength you're not that the wrong thing the wrong place at the wrong time but you're actually being more effective you're being more effective but also in trying to lead others how can we lead others if i'm not willing to put in the time myself you know somebody said to me before they said to me you know i'm not intellectual i'm not a thinking type person so it, you know that's not me 
And I had to challenge the person and say, maybe that's true. Maybe, maybe you're not that intellectual. Maybe you're not that type of person. But the person you're trying to reach, the person you're trying to reach in that workplace, the family member, they want answers. They want to have robust answers. And if you can't give them robust answers, they might not come to the gospel. And not only that, if you love them, if you love them, you will not only try and get the answers that they need, but you'll even try and do it in a way that they can hear. The person kind of like graveled at that, but that's true. If we love God and love people, we won't try and just reach people where we like to reach the way we like to do it. No, they are the center point of our love and therefore we will try and give the answers that they need in the way that they need them. So that means that sometimes we have to put some work in. Work in in, in clearing our thinking, in clearing our ways of doing things so that we can do our best to reach them where they're at with what they need, even if it's not a, what you need or what you've experienced that you, you out of love you're you're going to try and reach them in the way that is best for them because it's not about you it's not about you and so there's there's a call to maturity there's a call to loving maturity love for god love for people love for god and love for people when we say love the lord your god with all your heart with all your soul or with all your thinking or with all your mind and with all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself that also means to love your neighbor from your in other words have a right motive it also means to love your neighbor with your mind to think intellectually properly about how you think about them and how you reach them and to love them with your strength in servant service not many people realize that they don't realize that you have to also love people with your thinking and love people with your heart motive and so we're called to do that so it's not even about you it's also about you becoming the best that you can be and being able to be the best that you can be to reach others as well. To have a full, solid understanding. Paul said, I become a Roman to the Romans and a Greek to the Greek and a Jews to the Jews. I become unlearned to the unlearned and educated to you know, the, the barbarian or the, the, the high. So likewise. So we have in our kerygma, we have a number of different things. Now these slides are... I recognize a few different... Uh, I'd probably... I'll probably do this video again, but I'll probably do it myself. For full video when this lockdown is gone and where I can actually have a haircut. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, in the curriculum, we, there's a number of areas that we look at. life about God about the things of God and, and help them and call them to respond in faith and there's also on a deeper level there's a thing called uh, polemics which is the whole area of internal arguments that sometimes even happens in within the family of Christianity and to deal with that so there's a level in the sense the very ver very first level of antiphon or just you know basically helping people to understand answer those questions and then move on but then there's also the a level on a deeper level of apologetics why we believe jesus rose from, from the dead why do we believe that the bible is the word of god you know giving some solid intellectual answers to that and christians need it just as much as non-christians then also we have other areas such as exegetical or uh, theology or biblical exp uh, exposition now exegetical is really kind of talking about bible translations and how we see the text of the scripture but also in one sense there's a part of that which is hermeneutics which means the study or how do you interpret it, the bible text and to have a good understanding of how to do that at this moment during this whole lockdown a lot of people are gone into end times and and wondering what's happening with the end times uh, and then also other people are gone into the area of ethics uh, should I take the vaccine? Should I not take the vaccine? Not only from an end time perspective, but from an ethics per perspective. And how do you deal with that? And so we do need um, exegetical uh, understanding of the scriptures, how to interpret the scriptures, how to have good hermeneutics. And so then there's also dig deep in the sense of biblical uh, biblical exposition, going into books of the Bible, like we're, we're doing somewhat on a Sunday at the moment, you know, but really going dig deep into the books of the Bible. There's also the school of biblical theology or systematic theology uh, as well. 
So the biblical theology is a little bit like that exposition going, getting the big picture, but also getting the big picture. And there's a systematic theology, which we call basic. But we also even have a very first level on that called begin. At the moment we have, I think it's about 12 people we have on begin at the moment. And doing begins covering um, 24 subjects. And so we have a number of people doing that. And there's other areas, church, church history. Um, you know, getting a grasp of the church history, having that. There's other areas about uh, living well, just issues of practical theology as such, and uh, in the area of living well, and some of the pastoral. In a sense, to your life. that comes out in Sunday sermons, but there's aspects uh, such that we might cover in Kerygma as well in that. And there's leadership, of course, and then there's uh, missionology and evangelism and church planting. So these are some of the things that come out in the whole era of Kerygma, very vast that we want to do. It's a very big, very big thing we want to do, but all of it is under the area of Kerygma to be able to disciple. So we have a, a simple system of ABCDFG. You've seen this again, and I'm repeating it so you remember. It's very easy to remember, ABCDFG, and to remember the track, the discipleship track that we're all called to be part of. And now we're using different things. Again, these slides are a little bit old, so they're not actually bringing up all the, what I wanted to bring up. Um, I didn't bring, I don't know where the new ones are at the moment. But we want to do a lecture based, uh, whether live or video, but then also we want to do different things to help people to gain understanding. And that's a little bit hard to do during this whole COVID time when we're doing it, you know, fill in sheets so that you can get the most out of it. And we also want to flip the class uh, for the Discussion, scripture memorization and question and answer discussion time is really a part of it and mentoring as well help and the whole mentoring stuff there's a lot we can't do this is actually old because we can't do some of this right now so with that in mind you know um, we want to help people to also have that commitment now there's not necessarily a, a, a cost commitment in the sense of price except just drawing on people's hearts to listen to the Holy Spirit what they might say Holy Spirit might say to them about giving, but really a commitment, a commitment to grow, a commitment to really be that, to love God with all your heart, with all your soul or your mind and with all your strength. And then to also love people, uh, love people as you love yourself, to, but also to love them with your heart, your motive and with your mind to, to actually be able to think things true. And so we want to call people to commitment. Salvation is free, but discipleship costs everything we have. Uh, Billy Graham said that. So we're calling people to that. And, you know, for people to really think well and that at the end of it, there'd be MCQs. Now, I say all that to really bring out, uh, as well as that, uh, I want to really, I'm just going to skip some of that part about the exams and stuff like that, because it's a little bit out of date. I say all that to say that we really want to develop people. And those of you within Foursquare, as well as that, to connect to the whole DLT that and training. Now, it's part of what we're bringing that in now to Kerygma. Uh, Foursquare recognizes around the world that they want to really bring this type of thing that we were trying to do already. And some countries have done it, but they want to really bring this all over the world. And um, with that in mind, to really have stable disciples who make stable churches and stable leaders and develop people as far as they can go. So with that in mind, that those who go through it as well, a certain we want to license them and give them the freedom to be able to do what God's called them to do and have that confidence to know that they, they've done enough to be able to go and to feel free and confident and competent that they can go forward and minister. And so what we are going to cover after Easter, after Easter we're going to go into the whole area of Bible interpretation. It's called hermeneutics. Now we're going at the level, the D level. So it's, it's in one sense it's college level. We're going to go at it from the college level. Again, we have a difficulty with this whole COVID and lockdown. How am I going to do the interaction and how we're going to do that? I'm trying to still work out how I'm best going to do that. But we're go we need to cover the subject. Lockdown or no lockdown. I, I just We need to cover it right now. Because I, I see people even interpreting the book of Revelation in a skewed manner. Or interpreting Bible passages out of pressure and not knowing how to interpret it well and for you to be able to interpret the bible well to think it true even in how you read the scriptures well how you do it well and you'd be surprised at how much we don't do it we just do licky dip business and you'd be surprised at how many christians 
are not reading the Bible well, that the Holy Spirit can use it to, to be a blessing to them. But we want to do that. We want to help you. And then also that you then have that teaching where you can help somebody else. You can really help somebody else to interpret soundly the Word of God. And we need to. The Word of God is important. We need to be able to interpret it well. So that's what we're going to cover after Easter. We're going to get into that straight after Easter. And so I want to even say it now. You have two, we have, well, three weeks in advance because, of course, next week um, we'll do something, but then we have Easter and then we have the following week. So it'll be either the following week or the week after. So we have two weeks, three weeks from, from now as such to really just get your head around whether you want to commit to it because it's going to take work. It's going to take work to actually do this and do it well. And it's going to take work on my part as well because, yeah, trying to work it out how to best do it while this whole COVID thing is happening and, and to continue on. So we're going to do that. And also we want to help people then to be licensed in the DLT in the sense of within Foursquare. If you are a person who intends on preaching from the pulpit within Good News Christian Church, or even possibly in the future within Foursquare, you need to do this course on hermeneutics, how to read the Bible well, or how to interpret the Bible well. Because until we, we know that you can really interpret the scripture, how can you preach from it? So even though we've already opened up the pulpit many times, but really from here forward, that only those who have really studied hermeneutics who've done it well, can we really trust that they're going to look at the text well as well? And so we want you to do that and uh, to bless you in that. So I'm going to leave it at that. There's one or two other slides, but I know that they're the old ones, so I don't want to go into it right now. So I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, have any of you, uh, I this has all been working fine. Have any of you got any questions about, you know, discipleship, about the need of the church to be solid? You know, the world, have you seen some crazy teachings of late? Uh, crazy stuff, you know, if you want to make a comment about that. Oh, sound is cracking up again. Audio is not good. Oh, no. I've been teaching away. So I don't know how long the sound has been gone. Oh, I'm so, apologies. I apologize. I'm not quite sure what's happening there. So I take it, oh, I don't know what's happening there. So anyway, while you're here, um, while people are here, if there's anything you want to say about with regards to discipleship right now or with regards to the church. Hi, Jamie, I see you have to come in there on Facebook. With regards to the need in the church, you know, to grasp the things of God to have a healthy church, healthy disciples. Have you seen many un unhealthy disciples? Have you, do you see a need for this in the church worldwide? You know, where are you at uh, in the need for this? Uh, again, I think the sound was really bad, so forgive me, I apologize for that. But if you can say anything there, the sound is just okay. It was just a few minutes ago, okay. Okay. But if you have anything there that you want to share, um, again, you you know these things are, are really important and need in, in the church, and it's a passion of mine. It's a passion of mine to see the church really become healthy. So I don't know how many people are Ross. I see you're after moving over to YouTube, <laughs> Facebook. Guy, the Facebook must have been messy or something. It's good to see you on YouTube. Uh, so if you if you recognize there's a need for that, we have a need in the church. Every single one of us to really read the scriptures well, to interpret the scriptures well. And I just want to encourage you to really consider when we do, not just because of lockdown, but really consider doing it and doing it well. It's one of these foundation stones, hermeneutics, how to study, how to read the Bible well, how to study the Bible well. So that's really it for tonight. Unless something comes up in the discussion there, I just want to see anybody saying anything. I know they're saying the sound is back. Good stuff. Oh, it's a different Nathaniel. Well, I don't know if just bored Nathaniel is still on, but it was good to have you tonight, sir. And be blessed and be a blessing. I don't see, uh, said he's Ross's son. Oh, it's Ross's son. Oh, I see. 
Oh, I see. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, your son is what? About uh, your son is what? About 14? Is that your son's age? Good stuff. Good to see. Great stuff, guys. Uh, okay, that's it for tonight. Hopefully next, sun, uh, next Wednesday night, I will hopefully have uh, the actual main leader of DLT uh, from America. He's a top theologian within Foursquare. He's the one who's overseeing the global DLT school, as such, or t movement. And I'm hoping that I might be able to interview him and have him either live or at least a, a recording. And just again, giving some of the overview of DLT and what we're trying to do. So I really would encourage you to tune in next Wednesday night and have that. Of course, we will have different things happening as well on possibly on Good Friday night. And we'll also have, he's 12. Oh, blessings. It's a good age to be to learning truth. It's a good age to be learning truth. Um, or we'll also ho hopefully have something on Good Friday night with regards. And I'll get a text message out of that. Uh, again, Easter Sunday is coming. This whole lockdown. It's a messy situation right now. What way we want to try and do things for Easter Sunday. I'd rather do something more vibrantly and together. But however we are where we are. And we'll work with what we got. So be blessed and be a blessing. God bless you. Um, that's it for tonight. Have a good evening. Uh, have a good rest. Be blessed tomorrow. And be blessed during the week. I'll see you soon. God bless you. Bye bye.